All right. So good morning, everyone. This is your business pitch, how to pitch in a virtual environment. This is uh, our sponsor is Supply of Rhode Island, which is Rhode Island Commerce. We thank you all very much for joining us this morning. I think we're going to have a good morning because I'm excited. Are you excited? Listen, give me some give me some thumbs up. Say that you're excited in the chat. Give me some reactions. You know, I just love to have a lively uh, seminar of people. And guess what? You're not going to hear my voice for the entire time. So it's going to be excellent. My name is Kareem Canston, and I want to welcome you all uh, today. And I am going to have Doris Blanchard, the Assistant Director of Supply Rhode Island, to welcome us this morning. And Doris, welcome us this morning. Say hello to the people. Thank you, Kareem. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. I'm so, so excited to see so many familiar faces after so many, many months of this uncertainty during the pandemic. As you can imagine, we have been very busy in 2020, assisting, helping, and connecting our small businesses, our suppliers with opportunities. And this is the first uh, webinar, and I'm so happy to have Karim next to me, virtually, <laughs> uh, to provide you with this uh, workshop. So I, I wanted to welcome you again. I want your entire attention and participation during this uh, an hour and a half. Um, and I am so happy to, we are going to continue with uh, more upcoming uh, webinars. So um, after this session, uh, we're going to send you a survey. So please be um, very honest uh, and also provide us with feedback and recommendations or what kind of workshops you are, you know, you want to have in for the quarter. Um, so we're very excited to start the year, you know, with Kareem um, to provide you uh, in this virtual environment, as you can imagine, you know, a lot of our events, upcoming events is going to be, you know, using this type of platform. So we want to, you know, to you to be comfortable pitching your business virtually. So we have Karim today to provide you all those tips, you know, so you can be successful. I'm sure you know Karim, but I'm just going to tell you a little bit about him. Karim calls himself the encourager because he inspires and motivates people in their life, career, and business. He is, doesn't talk about changing the world. He does it. He does it himself. Um, he is a consultant, author, author, entrepreneur, advocate for many, many businesses. Um, he is an owner of Kenston Development, a management consulting firm that focuses on the areas of business growth, leadership, and economic development. I'm sure you have seen him, you know, through media that he also um, works with uh, Goldman Sachs, the 10,000 Small Businesses Program, funded by Goldman Sachs. He's currently uh, an instructor also for CBS Health health executive learning series. Um, he does a lot of workshops and speeches, lectures, presentations about economic development and leadership. So it is a great pleasure for me to have Karim today. And Karim, you can take it away. Thank you, Doris. Wow. I mean, I, I should have you introduce uh, me all the time. I think I'm going <laughs> to yeah, use that. So hello, everyone. Once again, thank you all very much for joining us. Thank you, Doris and uh, Supplier I team and Rhode Island Commerce for putting this together. Uh, we're going to have a great uh, 90 minutes together just to give you a little bit history about Supplier I. Um, the goal of Supplier I is to bring together um, Rhode Island institutions, as they call anchors, large institutions like a Brown uh, University, like a Meeker, CVS, and allow for a process to um, have businesses that are here in Rhode Island to actually do business with the large uh, anchor businesses. So, um, you know, we want to um, thank you all for, for joining us and thank you for uh, being a part of this and and so doris thank you for uh you know doing that introduction she does a lot of great things and her team does so i would say if you um have not um, contacted doris uh if you are looking to do business with 
big institutions, you probably need to reach out to her like ASAP and her team. And so she does a wonderful job. Her team does a wonderful job. And that goal is to get more um, businesses in Rhode Island to do work um, with you all, right? And so um, it's funded by many people, Rhode Island Corporation, Haran Foundation, um, and also the uh, Rhode Island Commerce Corporation. So you, you all are this is a great opportunity. So today, this morning is going to be great. As I said before, if you haven't introduced yourself in the chat, please uh, tell us your name, your company name, and what product or service you provide. All right. So Doris talked a, a little bit about um, what I do. Um, I love to facilitate. I love to teach um, people. I, I love to help small business owners actually grow their revenue and so we're going to have a great time this morning. Um, we're going to have activity. So feel free if you have any questions um, or comments that you want to um, post in the chat, you could do that. Um, I have a good friend on here named Diane Kane. Um, we do things with um, John Maxwell team with, with leadership and training and development. So she's going to be, be watching the chat making sure that there, if there's anything I, I missed that I need to take a look at. And so she's going to be my, my chat facilitator uh, today. So thank you, Diane, um, for, for doing that also. So I want everyone to answer this question. What tips are you looking to get from the seminar? So everyone answer that question and put that in the chat. What tips are you looking to get from the seminar? All right. What tips? Everyone answer that question. What tips are you looking to get from the seminar? Everyone answer that question in the chat, post it in the chat. All right, everyone post in the chat. I want to see what tips are you looking to gain from the seminar? So I want everyone to, to answer that question in the chat, all right? All right, people looking for some Zoom information, all right? People are looking for new techniques, all right? Move me on a cold call, all right? That's good, that's good, awesome. Important points when presenting. How to contact the anchor companies. Right, you, want to, you want to talk to Doris about that, right? I think she put her email in uh, the chat also. Also, uh, how to do pitches, one minute, 30 seconds. Okay, all right, all right. And how to gear up for your Pacific industry. Cool. Oh, cool. This is awesome. You all have some good stuff that you're putting in the chat. All right. Awesome. Techniques to enhance sales. All right. Cool. You all have some good things. All awesome. So this is the learner objectives for uh, today. All right. Is that we gonna we will help you to develop a knowledge of how to plan for a business pitch, especially in this virtual environment, which a lot of business is being conducted um, online versus face to face, and we understand that the environment. Um, we thought we're gonna we're gonna get back to more face to face business, but it hasn't uh, materialized yet. So. This is where we're operating and might be operating for, for a little bit. And so um, we want to help you to learn some practices about uh, pitching your business. Also, how do you engage an audience, right, in a virtual environment? And then learn tips. How do you follow up after you do your business pitch? And so you'll see some of um, that engagement uh, through this, this virtual Zoom webinar. So you've seen a little bit already, asking people to put something in the chat. You've seen um, that we also, you know, ask people to uh, say, you know, your name, your business, your product. So you're getting the engagement and you're seeing already some tips. So you probably want to get your notepad out and kind of write down some tips that you see that uh, we're doing today. So it's just going to help you out. And as I said, feel free if you want to pop any uh, questions in the chat. Um, we'll, we'll take a look at them. And Diane will make sure that I, I'll take a look at them. So you, we want you to be all in. So the biggest tip about communicating with people face-to-face -face or in a virtual environment, you have to be all in into the conversation. That means that you want to put away all distractions, all right? And so that means that if you have multiple screens up on your computer, you might just want to close them down except for the Zoom or if you're taking notes, right? Silence your telephone, um, especially if you're not waiting, waiting for an emergency call. And take notes 
and also be professional, right? That is so, so important um, to know. So um, we're going to actually have you do an activity, <laughs> right? And so, as I said before, we're going we're gonna to get you all to, to see some tips that are going to gonna actually help you out. So the activity is that we are going to put you in breakout rooms and we want you to um, say your name, your company, the product or service that you sell, and then a call to action, all right? And so you'll have 30 seconds to do this. So you're gonna, we'll put you in um, groups of probably like four to five. So we want you to do your name, your company, your product or service and call to action, all right? And so when you get into the room, we want you to have one person to sign a, a timekeeper and put 30 seconds on a countdown clock so we can make sure that we're done in five minutes. And so we're going to put you in breakout rooms and you're going to need to assign a timekeeper. You have 30 seconds per person and we'll post this in the, in the chat so you could uh, uh, make sure that you know, you know what the directions are. And then you have five minutes in, in that chat room. So I'm going to actually put together breakout rooms and when you see... Um, yes, I have them ready to go. I just need to push the button for you. Oh, awesome. Cool. So, um, all right. So remember, sign a timekeeper when you get into the breakout room, 30 seconds um, per person, and then you have five minutes in the breakout room. Um, and also, so remember your name, your company, the product or service that you provide, and then a call to action, what you want the person to do. So when Diane opens up the room, you want to say, join the room. So Diane, let's do it. And they are open. All right, everyone. Welcome back. Welcome back. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. So if everyone can actually um, answer that question in the chat, what did you like about the introduction activity? All right. Everyone answer that question in the chat. What did you like about the introduction activity? Everyone answer that question in the chat. What did you like about the introduction activity that you just did in the breakout room? It was quick, like power dating. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I like that. Love getting to know other people in the breakout. All right. Learn more about other people's products and services. All right. It was engaging. Okay. All right. Everyone in timekeeper. All right. Hey, John, you want to unmute yourself and just talk about that? What do you mean about Timekeeper? Is John, you want to answer that question? Oh, we don't hear you. You might be still muted, but if not, you can, you can put in the chat. Go ahead, John. Doris, Doris was keeping track of the time. You, you like that? I thought that was clever. All right. All right. I, so, I should have been keeping track myself. <laughs> no problem. So, so as I said before, we're going to give you a lot of tips as it relates to meeting and business pitching in a virtual environment. And when you have a, a timekeeper and one of the things that, you know, I'll, the next time maybe I'll show it to you all, but I also have a virtual background where the, it has a countdown clock. It actually keeps people on track. So if you say you was going to meet with somebody for 30 minutes, you should have some effective timekeeping techniques as I just sh showed you all that could keep people on track, right? And so think about it. I wasn't in a room with you all. I gave you directions, had a timekeeper, and hopefully that kept people on track. So you use that technique when you're in meetings or if you're, you're trying to keep on track yourself when you're in a virtual environment and trying to be effective, that's another key step, all right? Somebody said, oh, Joan, I, I learned that I need a 30-second pitch and got fabulous ideas. Oh, all right, sweet. I like that. So we're going to give you some tips about, you know, your 30-second uh, pitch also, right? Um, people love the feedback. And so as I said before, you are going to see tips being presented here that's going to help you out in a virtual environment. And you, you've seen uh, a, a lot already, right? Using the chat box, um, asking people to ask a question, sometimes asking people to unmute themselves. And so these tips are just going to help you out uh, to, to further your communication. And so John Maxwell says, listen, if you ask me what's the number one thing you can do to be more successful, 
is to learn to communicate, right? And he has a great book um, uh, titled, Everyone Communicates, Few Connect. And so when you're thinking about communication, remember communication happens differently for everyone, right? Sometimes people um, communicate by seeing, right? Some people communicate by, you know, they listen a lot. Some people talk a lot, right? And some people uh, communicate, they learn by doing things. So remember, when you are communicating, especially in this virtual environment, there's a different ways that you could communicate to get your message across effectively, all right? And so uh, we're going to give you tips about, you know, what you should be thinking about when you're preparing for um, communicating with people in a virtual environment. And it's, it's just going to help you out. And so hopefully already you've seen some things um, that uh, were just awesome. So Diane posted in the chat um, a, a poll question. How effectively, effectively do you think you communicate? And we want you to answer that from one to five. So one being low, five being high. How effectively do you think you communicate? Everyone, everyone answer that in the chat. She just posted a question in the chat. How effectively do you think you communicate? On a scale of from one to five, one being low, five being high, I communicate high. What would be your, your ranking? All right. All right, I'm, I'm gonna call on my, my good friend, Lynn, Lynn Hall. You said 3.5, you wanna unmute yourself and tell us why you, you said 3.5? Um, hi. <laughs> Hello, Lynn. Now, I, just, I just lost the whole screen. I can't see anybody or anything. It's all right, I can see you. <laughs> as long as you can see me, I guess we're good, right? Okay, yeah. um, I'd say 3.5, I, I tend to overspeak sometimes and mm. then what I'm saying can get uh, sort of muddled. Um, so I think that I do speak or I do communicate clearly. However, then I start to overcompensate and it can get muddled. All right. All right. All right. Cool. Thanks. Thanks for sharing. Could get muddled. All right. And then um, Mr. Mr. Rob, you want to, what was your score and tell us uh, why did you score yourself that way? If you unmute yourself. Hi there. Hello. So I, I, t I don't know. I'm, I tend to pause and, and kind of think things out before I, I present to, uh, to a client, a customer. Okay. Um, but I think that's, that's kind of my, my downfall. All right. All right. So pause. Oh, I scored myself a three. I'm sorry. I didn't answer that. No problem. <laughs> no problem. That's what, that's right. We, we all have to work on our communication. And I think I saw a two or 2.5. Was that Amar? Did you put a two there? If you're going to mute yourself. That's, you know that, that, that's from my side. Yeah. I think uh, I need to improve on, I'm a good listener, okay. but I also need to be presenting better. And that's what I'm, I've been working on. That's the reason I'm here. Okay. So I can I can see what you guys are talking about, how it's done, what are the effective techniques. Timekeep is one thing that certainly I picked up upon. So All yeah, right. thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Well, well, thank you very much for even uh, responding. And then, and then Kelly, what was your score? And um, tell us why. I chose a four and I, I'm with Lynn. I think it was Lynn. <laughs> um, I tend to over communicate as well. So I feel I get the message across, but then I'm like, I have to elaborate for some reason instead of just stopping and letting whomever soak it in, you know? Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. So you all just saw one of the, a good tip when you're communicating virtually, ask a question, right? And ask someone else to talk instead of you talking. And so I would, I would say as you start prepping for your meetings with people, think about the questions that you're going to ask um, the people that you're going to meet with off as one person, all right? And so here, this, we're using technology, right? Here, here are some technology tips. You probably should do this, you know, days before or hours before you meet with someone. Test your equipment, right? Test your internet connection. Huge. You're not if you're not connected, then you're probably not gonna get in. But also have a backup plan for that. 
So as you know, Zoom, you could call in. So you might want to have the call-in number handy just in case your internet connection goes down, just in case your computer crashes or the, the lights go out, but you could still, um, you know, use your telephone to, to connect, right? And I like that. Diane says, test, test, test some more, right? Test, 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 and test again. Test your camera, right? Whatever camera you're using, if it's built in, if it's not built in, um, you know, test your audio, I was doing that this week because I, I just got these these new headphones. And when I'm on a meeting with people, I'm like, tell me how did the sound sound to you, right? You know, and, you know, test the audio. You might want to get somebody else inv involved. And then test your environment. People are like, why do you even think that should be on there? Why? Because your environment also will impact the meeting that you're having. All right? So, you know. Where are you going to be? Where are you going to have the meeting? Is it going to be in your office? Is it in your car? Is it, you know, in a place that's noisy? Is it a, a place where you can't get certain things done? It is an important meeting. So if you could plan better and you could think about these things, it's just going to, it's just going to help you out, right? Even, even more, right? So how do you prepare for the meeting? This is, this is huge. I'm, I'm going to tell you, if there's one thing I want to walk away from, um, from this, this, uh, seminar is this one preparing for the meeting this is probably even more than having a meeting why if you're not preparing for it then you're just going to a meeting to have a meeting this is a way to help you to make sure you're doing the right things and like people said already right and how can i present better how can i bring in more sales when i have the opportunity to be in front of people Preparation is key, right? It will share um, a, a free uh, profile sheet, meeting profile sheet with you all, but you should have a profile sheet. Who are you going to meet with, right? Who's the company or the organization or the person you're meeting with? And that means being specific down to the names, the titles, and thinking about a day in the life of this person. And, I, and I'll ask a question and people can post it in the chat. Uh, you know, why do you think you know, knowing the day in the life of somebody is important. Why do you think it's important to understand the day in the life of the person that you're going to meet with? You all can answer. Why do you put that in the chat? Why do you think it's important to understand a day in the life of the person that you're going to meet with? There's no, there's no, there's no wrong, wrong answer to that, but you know, why do you think that might be important for you, you to know what's happening with that, right? To connect that, that level. I like that. All right. Um, and I give you, I, I, I give you one quick tip to, un if you understand what's going on in that person's the day in the life, then it will help you out. Empathize. Oh yeah, that's good, Joan. Right. You need to empathize with the person. If, if you know you're meeting with someone, you know that, you know, many people are working from home. Sometimes their kids are there also, um, you know, at home with them. If you could understand kind of what's happening and what might be in the day in the life, it will help you better prepare, right? So if you know someone is super busy and they gave you 15 to 30 minutes of their time and you prepare uh, uh, for a great meeting, and maybe they gave you 30 minutes and maybe you only, you only spend 15 minutes on that meeting. They probably will, will respect you more because now you're giving them 15 minutes back in a day that they can use to be more effective. Right. And also valuing people's time. It's, it's huge. Right. And so um, there's many times when I set up meetings with people and they say, Kareem, I, I thought we were going to meet for an hour. I said, yes, we could have. I said, but you know what? If we effectively run this meeting, we'll finish in 30 minutes, and then you have 30 minutes back that you can do whatever you want. And people love that, right? And so it, it just helps you to prepare better for that meeting. And then also you could be prepared to have questions, right? You know, you want to develop questions for the meeting that would help you to connect with that person, right? And, and, and I do that all the time, right? So I, I usually go to people's website. I research the company. I look at the team. I might go to LinkedIn and, um, and, and take some information down because I want to be able to connect with that person, 
right? So I had a meeting with someone two weeks ago that had an American flag um, in the background um, in the office. And so I started talking about how I served in, in, in the Army National Guard, right? I didn't say anything about the flag, but I say maybe I can make a connection with them that way. And so there's certain things that will help you before you even have the meeting to make the meeting spectacular, right? Because you want to have a spectacular meeting. You want, you want people to call you back. You want people to say, listen, I want to work with you or I want to do another meeting with you. And right, and research is huge, right? Research is huge. Knowing your audience is, is, is important also. So this is my technology setup that I use. Um, I have a laptop, then I have a big monitor, and then I have, I usually sometimes use a green screen you need to ask yourself these questions. What technology do you have and what do you need, right? Because you want to make the meeting the, the, the best meeting that that person had, right? And we understand technology sometimes does have a glitch. We, we know that, right? I think the other day um, on the East Coast, Verizon had a big outage. And so technology does, does, does fail. But, you know, that doesn't mean that, you know, because it, 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 it didn't work correctly, you you just stop everything, you get frustrated, right? So say, for instance, the technology went down, you get on the phone, you call a person, you send them an email, or maybe you told them, you know, listen, you know what, if something happens, this is how we're going to communicate. Because you want to make sure that you prepare for every single thing, right? So for instance, if the technology goes down now, I have my friend Diane Kane on, on, on the line. She has access to the PowerPoint. She could pick up right from where where I am. So that's another thing that you might want to think about. Do you have another person to help you out to facilitate a conversation or be the backup? All right. And so um, hopefully, hopefully that helps. All right. Any, any questions people have right now that you want to pop in the chat or comments or a quick question you want to ask me about what we talked about so far? Feel, feel free if you wanted to post something in the chat or you just wanted to unmute yourself and, and, um, and ask me right now. I'll ask you. Go ahead. Um, how do you feel about virtual backgrounds in a professional setting? I have a lot of meetings where people's heads disappear because they don't have the green screen. Yeah. I don't like doing that because I just think that's a little strange, but unless you have a green screen and, the, and then I guess that makes it better. But what, what are your thoughts on that? Kelly, that's a, that's a great question. And so, um, there are computers now that you don't even need a green screen and actually it works very effective to put a virtual background behind you. So it really depends on um, the type of technology that you're using. And that's why I said test, 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 because the computer I use right, right now, depending on what camera I use, um, it works uh, better with a green screen and sometimes it doesn't. Right. So that's why you want to plan that out beforehand. Right. And and, and that's so important, uh, especially in the environment, you know, and then what are people seeing in the background? Right. So my background right now is, you know, I have my virtual background up. But if I didn't have my virtual background up, you will see my green screen and it will look like this. Right. And so because I want to have a nice crisp background. And I don't want you to see my green screen or, or, you know, behind me is, is a wall that's white. I, I want you to see, you know, a professional look with my logo that is very presentable. So it's really up to you what you want to do. And, and that, and that is important, right? Because what's behind you, people are going to focus on it. Well, I thought you were in an actual office. So that's an excellent, <laughs> but I am that's in an, an excellent actual I'm in an actual office, but I have my green screen up because I like how, how this looks. It looks more professional to me, mm. right? And so it really depends. And that's why you want to work on where, where, where you are, what you're doing, and plan for, especially if it's a, it, it's, a, it's a very important meeting, you want to make sure that you thought about things and it's just going to make the meeting go, go much better, right? And, and so I'll, I'll I share with you, I... You know, I was on the phone with a couple of people from Ohio that's looking for me to do some, you know, some motivational speaking to a point where I, I scheduled a meeting for 30 minutes and they said, can we please stay on a call with you for another hour or two? Because I don't want to go back to work because I'm so inspired today. I said, no, we scheduled 30 minutes. I respect your time. 
you could go back and get your hour back, or whatever you plan, you know, the time with me. And so they, they were happy, but that's the reason why they called me back and had a second conversation. Cause I was, they, I respected their time. Anybody else before we jump into talking about um, body language and voice communication? I want to ask a question. Kareem, Joan asked about our backgrounds distracting. If the background is not a good background. And so listen, I, I'm gonna just, so take a look at this picture, right? <laughs> this person is supposedly doing a meeting, but look what's behind them in that picture. Th that I will be looking at the background more than I'm look, listening to the person talking to me, right? It looks like a, it's a peacock, you know, type of uh, image. So it depends on, um, it depends on the background. Now, there's certain backgrounds. It could just be a, a white, a white background. It could be plain. It doesn't have to have pictures. And so, I would say that's the reason why I would say you want to work those things out beforehand, um, so you could be more impactful. Or if you're in your office, if you're in your house, and the background's fine, that's fine. But you want to think about if I'm trying to get this person to listen to me and not be looking at what's behind me or being distracted, what is going to be effective? And you test those things out beforehand. And you might want to do a trial one with trial run with somebody else um, because you want the people to be focused. As I said before, hey, I need people to be all in. That means all into the conversation and we don't need any, any distractions. All right. In, anybody, any other question that you saw in the chat or anybody else has a question? Um, as we talk about body language, right? What you know, people are probably laughing at me, right? What does your face look like? <laughs> I, what, what I'm talking about is that, are, are you looking down in this meeting or are you happy? Are you smiling? Are you excited, right? You know, and that's really up to you. You know, it depends on what type of meeting it is, right? I'm, I'm trying to motivate you all and, and give you some information and tips. So, um, hopefully you're seeing the excitement that I have about um, sharing this information. And then also, what are you wearing? There's a huge thing, right? What What are you wearing? I'm going to be honest with you. I had a meeting with someone, um, a, co a colleague in a different different state of mind, you know, different state than here. And I thought we were going to have a, you know, check-in call. They were laying in the bed with a pillow on them. And I'm like, you should have kept the camera off. <laughs> I'm like, I didn't want to see you that way. And, you know, yes, we're not having a professional meeting, but I didn't think that, you know, the, you, it was going to be that you, you were going to be looking that way. You should have just kept the camera off. And sometimes the camera needs to be off, depending on what type of conversation you're having or if there's a lot of distractions and, and that's fine. And I usually tell people in, in a, in the virtual meeting, say for instance, the other person has a lot of distractions. I, I tell them it's fine if you want to turn your camera off. Because really, I just really need to hear your voice. And so I give people those options also, depending on what, what type of setting or if they have a lot of distractions that they're dealing with in the background. So, um, and then also, you know, are you going to be sitting or standing? Um, you know, and then we talked about that already. What's in your background, right? You know, I know sometimes people have in the background um, things that they want people to do or people to, to remember them by, right? So if you're talking about your company and you want people to go to your website more, maybe you have your website um, behind you in the background, right? Or maybe you have something that you want people to remember you by because of your company from the background, all right? Any, any questions about body language that people have? Any question about body language? Kareem, can you talk about movement, especially if someone's on their phone? Oh, oh, oh. See, Diane, see, I didn't think we was going to talk about the phone stuff, but since we're talking about it, <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about it. Yes. So if you're on your phone, um, you probably should have your, your phone being stable, right? Because if you if your phone is not stable, then you're moving around and out a person. And I, and I think I was, I was on a meeting the other day and this person was, was on their phone going back and forth in their chair 
and it seemed, and actually I was getting dizzy. So you want to think about that, right? You know, if you have a phone, maybe you need to buy a phone stand and you have your phone stable or you maybe you put it up, you know, so it could be stable. Um, and phones are not as, on Zoom is not as good as um, computers or tablets. So I, I would say refrain from using a phone as much as you can, unless you, you really have to, you know, um, and you have to get on. And that's why, that's why I say sometimes video might not be the best, right? Especially if, if you're moving a lot with your phone, you're going to make people dizzy. So turn off your video or ask the person, I'm getting a little bit dizzy. Can you just turn off your video? I just need the sound, right? Because you want the, the meeting to be very, very effective. So thank you for bringing that up, Diane. All right. So let's talk about um, your voice. <laughs> and I think some people said this already. You know, sometimes I talk too much. Sometimes I pause a lot. And your voice should a, exude enthusiasm. All right. Your voice should exude enthusiasm. It, I mean, just think about it. You're in, if you're doing a sales pitch, you want to be a, a, a enthusiastic about what you're talking about, right? If, if you're, you get, you want people to get passionate and excited about their services or the products that you sell, you want them to feel like, man, I feel like I'm right there in the room with you, right? <laughs> and, um, and then also, you know, what you're talking about should be understandable. The reason why I say this, because there's a lot of acronyms in certain industries, and sometimes people don't know what the acronym, acronyms are. So like, for instance, in the marketing industry, there's an acronym called CRM, Customer Relationship Management System, right? Or software. A lot of people don't know what a CRM is. They do know what, you know, keeping track of the customer uh, relationships are. And so reduce the acronyms, right? And that means that preparing for that meeting, right? Sometimes I have bullet points. Like, you know, um, right now I have, you know, my, my slides printed out. I have notes on them. And so I could focus on what I need to focus on. Also, your speech should be clear. And so for those people that talk very fast, you might have to slow down a little bit, right? And you might have to just, it, it might feel uncomfortable to you, but you want people to remember what you are saying versus just talking very fast and, you know, I need to get the information done, but, but people are not going to understand you. So you got to slow it down, have medium speech, medium, you know, speech talking. And, and that comes with practice, right? Practice makes, makes perfect. So sometimes before I have a meeting, I would do a meeting and record myself so I could see how I, I, I'm talking, right? And so um, hopefully those are some, some, some good tips. Any, any questions about that voice communication? As you can see, um, I have a um, microphone. It is wired to my computer. Um, and so voice is, is so important. And so I try out a lot of different um, microphones. I, I would say if you are not using a microphone or headsets, usually a lot of times with a computer, it, it pulls a lot of um, noise in the background in. So you might want to think about using a, um, a voice canceling headphones or, or things like that. So, you know, it goes back to once again, what technology do you have? What do you need? Right. Questions. Any, any questions about that before I start talking, talking about some other nitty gritty stuff that I, that is very important to supply or I. Questions, comments. See, you as you can tell, I love interaction, right? So, <laughs> and and then at the end, we'll we'll definitely open it up for more uh, Q and A. Um, but one of the things I, I usually talk about when I'm uh, talking about the seminars here uh, with supplier I is having a customer uh, value value proposition, right? Um, the reason why I think is important is because when you have a potential customer or a current customer you are presenting to them why do why should they be still working with you but then also if they're a potential customer why should they work with you period and and truly you should have a customer value proposition what value are you bringing to that that customer all right 
you know, you can find this on, on, on Wikipedia and, and, and really this is not something that you have to share publicly, but something that, you know, you, you can have for yourself. Right. And so when I'm working with small business owners that are looking to grow their revenue, my value proposition is that you invest in my organization. I can help you grow your revenue. And people say, well, how do you do that? Well, we'll, we'll talk about the details and let me see, I need to do an assessment of your company and I need to have a conversation with you. But if I know if I'm bringing value to that customer, that is going to get them to get their ears to perk up and say, oh, interesting. This person is bringing value to me and maybe I do want to work with them or maybe I do want to have a meet, um, a follow-up meeting. And so, and I'll talk about that at the end. Like after you have the meeting, you and, and during a meeting, you need to have some action steps after. That goes back to the call to action that I that I put in there for the introduction. Um, and the reason why I didn't give you a definition of what the call to action should be or what should it be, because, you know, we're going to talk about it, right? Because you should be always thinking, what do I want the person to do after, right? I'm having a meeting with someone but what do I want them to do? What's the next step? You should think about that before you have the meeting, especially, right? You're looking, and somebody says, I'm looking to grow my sales. In order to grow your sales, when you are in, a front, in front of a customer, you have an opportunity to talk to one, you need to say, what do I need to tell the person to do next? Is it, you know, filling out a, an assessment form? Is it, going to the website and entering in that information? Is it actually um, making an agreement to pay me, right? So you need to say, what do I want that person to do? Because that has to, like every meeting, there should be something I want the person to do, right? So once again, the people I was talking to in the state of Ohio, I gave, I gave them an action step. I said, I know you want me to come and help you out with your organization, I need you to go do a, a quick survey about what topics people want to want to see. That was the action step. What that did for me is to show me if they give give that survey to their clients and then they report to me the information from the survey, that means they want to work with me. And I do that a lot with a, a lot of people. I give them I give I call it, you know, homework. If they come back to me with their homework, that means that they they might want to go to the next step. And that's something that you you all might want to think about. What's that next step do I want the people to take? All right. So let's talk about um, capability statements, right? And so uh, I'm going to bring Doris in when I talk about uh, an example of the capability statement. But capability statements is like your pass to work with supplier I and to get in front of anchors. It is um, usually a one to two page um, description. It's kind of like your, your company's business card, <laughs> all right? Um, especially now in a virtual environment. So what happens is that um, when supplier I gets requests from companies or entities, they first go and see on that database who has uploaded a industry capability statement, all right? And so this is, you know, the capability statement talk, talks about what you do, what you're doing and what have you done, right? And so it's tailored to, to a specific customer. So many times I get requests um, from people uh, that's looking to bring me in to work with them on a certain project. I already have a capability statement and then I tailor the capability statement to the specific customer, all right? And that is why it's important. It's just not, you know, this is, Hey, I'm just going to give them my capability statement. No, you need to tailor it to what they're looking for. And it's usually like one to two pages, depending on your industry. And I'll give you, give you a sample of one um, soon, right? It talks about your contact information, your competencies, right? You know, what are you skilled to do? Also, it talks about what prior work that is specific to what that customer that you're looking to work with for. So say, for instance, I'm in the construction industry. And I do um, general construction. This company called me up and say, um, Kareem, I want your construction company to actually do all the concrete for this, this job. I'm not going to go and tell them every single thing I do. I'm going to really highlight specific information about concrete work I've done or maybe I'm doing 
so they know that I can do that job. And that's why capability statements should be changed depending on who the customer that you're working with. It will have your industry codes on there, any certifications that you have for your business, past performances, awards, um, and it's usually one to, one to two pages. So this is an example of a capability statement, all right? Um, it will be for, say, for as a tech company, right? And usually it says capability statement at the top so people know what it is. Uh, it has their core capabilities, right? They do agile consultant, scrum consultant. All the tech people would know what that is, right? Um, team rollout. And, and then they have projects ex experience. So we work with, you know, the housing and development agency, GSA, the U.S. Department of Administration or Agriculture, you know, so it, this is just like a clean one pager example. Um, you could definitely go in and, and Google it. You could also contact probably Doris or our procurement and technical assistance um, office at Commerce, and they can help you out with this. All right. And, and they help suppliers. But, but Doris, talk a little bit about, you know, give people examples of what happened when COVID happened, when people, companies were looking for certain products. I know you wanted to talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Kareem. So, so as you can imagine, during the pandemic, uh, and this is something that I shared with Kareem yesterday, uh, a lot of our anchors and not just anchors, but uh, we are connected with the cities and towns, the chambers of commerce, you know, and ma ma many other business associations. So what happened during the pandemic is, you know, PPE, right? So PPE supplies, services, products, masks, gowns, hand sanitizers, you know, a lot of businesses went in through uh, an adaptation, they pivoted their operations. So every day we will send, you know, requests, we will get requests from our cities and towns, chambers of commerce, and our own anchors requesting those supplies and services. So we have a database of close to 1800 suppliers and under different categories. So if you go to the website, you will see yes, a COVID-19 list, I'll put the link in the chat, where we have a close to 20 pages of full of suppliers, you know, that we have uh, aggregated to provide those book, uh, services and, and, and goods. Um, but what happened is when we search in the database, if you didn't have your capability statement in your profile, you will not include it in the list. So that was a missed opportunity for a lot of our suppliers. They said, you know, I can provide gowns, I can provide masks or hand sanitizers, or translation services or marketing, you know, services. However, they didn't have their profile, you know, uh, up to date, or they didn't have their capability statement. And unfortunately, we didn't have the time to go back to those suppliers and say, hey, you know, can you upload your capability statement? So I encourage you to visit or revisit if you don't have a capability statement, please send me an email. I'll be happy to send you a template that you can work with. And, um, you know, we have another session uh, to help you put, to put together the capability statement, but it's very important for you to upload your capability statement. And you can send me an email. If you have one that you did it like maybe in 2018 or 2019, it's a little bit too old, send me, you cannot delete your capability statement, but you can upload a new one and we will delete uh, the, you know, the previous one in your profile. Thank you. Thank you, Doris. All right, Diane, put it in the chat. Um, can everyone answer that question? Do you have a capability statement, yes or no? So if everybody could answer that question. Someone said they would like to have a template. All right, cool. I think we could send the, I think, Doris, we have everybody's email, so we can send them out a template, right? Yep. All right, so I'll put that as a note on here. Send everybody a template for capability statement. And then also, if you have a capability statement that you posted on the supplier I website that's a little bit dated, you probably want to update the capability statement and then upload it back into the system. All right. So, um, you know, if you have something updated, if you added some, some things, um, to what you do for your firm, you probably want to um, upload that again. So as I said before, it could be one to two pages. Um, I did this sample on um, Adobe Spark. I know some people use Canva. Some people use Word. The template that we'll send is probably probably be like a Word template um, that you can use yourself. All right. All right. So 
we're still in a meeting, right? Even though we're talking about the capability statement, there might be an opportunity when you're having your virtual meeting to review your current capability statement, all right? And so if you have that opportunity, then during a the meeting, you can review it with the people. Um, and as I said before, you wanna, if you don't have one, you wanna develop one or update your capability statement and you upload that by going to supplyrhodeisland.com, right? So capability statement is, is, is huge. It's like, it's like your business business card, as I tell people, right? And so uh, a lot of times people are looking to do business with me. I, I would send them the, the capability statement based on what they're looking for for me to help them out with. So I would, I would tweak it, right? And, you know, um, and put some actually past performance or current performance things on there because it needs to be specific to what they're looking for. All right. Any, any questions about that, that people have um, that I could answer about the capability statement before I start talking about the post post pitch, what are you going to do after? All right. Any questions? Just to clarify, the capability statement is a pre pitch document you would send to them via email. Like once they show that they're a lead, I would say it depends. So, uh, and I'll, and I'll give you an example. So I had a meeting with a, um, medical organization in, in Massachusetts with their CEO to do strategic planning facilitation. And I did not send my capability statement beforehand because I wanted to meet the person first and see what they needed as it relates to a service, um, that I could provide for them. So I waited to have the conversation first to make sure what they really needed. And then I sent it after an email and I put specific information based on a conversation that we had about my competencies and then also things I'm doing now that they were like, oh, you're doing this now. But I had to get that information before the meeting. Now, if I had that conversation beforehand, then yes, I would send the, the capability statement or if they requested it, right? Some people do, do, do that. They might say, hey, can you give me a, your capability statement? All right. Um, you know, so it's, it, it really depends. You know, sometimes you can send it beforehand. Sometimes you want to get more information before you send it. Cause you want to, you want to tweak it. All right. Um, but thank you for that question, Kelly. All right. Anyone else about the capability statement? Any questions about it? Before I start talking about the, let's talk about the, the, the pitch. So like, so this is kind of like the, the opening, I kind of, you know, tell people post pitch opening. So you gave your, how can I say, you gave like your sales pitch. And then now you're trying to figure out what is the next step. The next step might be that you ask questions to continue the conversation. All right. And so what usually happens, as you know, especially if you're meeting someone for the first time, you're usually going over a, you know, how, you know, introducing yourself, they're introducing themselves. You give your, your quick, you know, 30 second, one minute pitch of what your company does, what product or service you could provide. But then you want to get into a point of, I call it the great skill of active listening. It's going to, it's going to help immensely. You have questions prepared already and you ask them the questions. So the biggest thing I ask people to, to about what is your pain or what's your problem that you're trying to solve? What is your pain? Or what's your problem that you're trying to, trying to solve? And then I start taking notes because you don't want to, you do not want to be talking all the time, right? What your pain or problem that you want to solve is going to tell you what should I be putting in my proposal next time I send them a proposal or my capability statement because the customer is going to tell you what they need. What happens a lot of times, we're telling the customer what they need. Let the customer tell you. And you're just saying, oh, so you need help with, um, you know, buying more products like this or getting more product, or you need help with um, this service. And you just restating what they just stated back to you. Questions are going to help you immensely in, in connecting with people and also in the sales process. Also, um, as I said before, you know, you, you share your capability statement and marketing material. Sometimes that happens when you're talking with them or after. It really depends on the, the conversation and, and also 
what type of relationship that's being developed. All right. And then also what action steps do you want the person to take that? That's the biggest one. You should have this thought out beforehand and, and just think about it. And so I put this question out there. If you, if you had your ideal customer in front of you, what would you want them to do next? All right. So if you had your ideal customer in front of you virtually or in person, what would you want that person to do next? People will probably say, I want them to buy right as soon as possible. <laughs> I want their credit card information. <laughs> I'm going to send them a bill. But what if that, that could happen, right? And so I use a great software called QuickBooks Online. And if somebody says to me, Kareem, I'm ready right now. I'll give you a deposit. I could go right on my phone or right on my computer and send them an invoice while we're talking. But you should have that thought out already, right? What do I want them to do next? Do I want them to, to um, you know, uh, agree to something? Do I want them to do something, right? Because depending on the, the client you're working with, they might need to do something so you know that they're a, a client that you want to work with, right? And I usually all, always tell people, once we get to this, this process, I say to them, um, if there's an opportunity for us to work together, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll take, a look at, take a look at it in the future. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm telling them already, it's just not, I really need your business. It has to be a mutual relationship. And for you to be a customer, you have to want to work with me. And if I want you to be a customer, I have to want to work with the organization. Right. And what that does is kind of puts some responsibility on the, the customer. And it's not like, oh, you know, I really, really need you. No, you want to say, listen, let's make a mutual agreement. And if we both agree, we can work together, right? Because sometimes we sound desperate. I'm, I'm just going to be honest with you, right? <laughs> you know, I really, really, I mean, you know, if I land you as a customer, you, you don't want to tell them that, right? You will really, you know, bring me over the top. No, you, you want them to have some responsibility on an action step, all right? And then you got to place their contact in, in the customer relation management system if you don't have one. Um, you don't need software to do this. You could use Excel. If you have a uh, accounting program, you can use that as a, your, your customer relation management system. But if you don't have them in a the system, you want to put them in a the system. And so I have a system right now. Um, it depends when I'm talking with people, I might put it in beforehand or after, but I take notes while they're talking. I'm taking those right in, sometimes right in the system. I know when I sent them an email, I know when I have to follow up with them. I know what documents I sent to them and it just helps me out immensely. All right. So the post pitch is what you want them to answer, but also what do you want them to do? So hopefully I, that's like, what do you want the person to do? Right. It's almost like, has anybody bought a car before you went to a car lot? Right. <laughs> right. You, they, they want you to do something. They want you to, you know, buy a car. They want you to, you know, to do the next step, go on a test drive. And then they want you to, to sign a document that you're going to buy that car today, not, not tomorrow. Because if you're in the, in the dealership, that means that you have a good propensity that you want to buy. So um, those, the salespeople in, in dealerships know the action steps, right? They know if they get you to certain points, right? They took a test drive. Oh, that's a good thing, right? They, they didn't just walk away. They came back into the, to the office. They sat down with me. Oh, that's the next step. Oh, now you want to look at rates for um, loans. Oh, that's the next step. So we're getting closer to a point where we could get you to, to purchase and sign on the dotted line. So you need to think about the steps you want people to take. All right. All right, so we're, we're, we're getting, we're getting uh, close to it. So what we want to do, and I, I love giving away free stuff. So my, my friend and I, Diane, we, we're going to host, um, this is open for anybody, um, to help develop your speaking skills. We're going to do a complimentary session next Thursday from 10 to 1030. Um, if people want to um, join in for that, we're also going to give you that free customer profile sheet. And we want to get people more tips, right? You know, so... Um, we love to be, be generous. So, um, we'll post that in the chat, you know, 
you go to that link bit.ly if you want to sign up for next Thursday. Um, but I really want to get to, you know, asking questions of people. There will be a survey that um, the team from Supply Rise is going to send out to you. Um, but let's let's go into the Q&A. I want I want to answer some questions. We have about, what, 20 minutes left from people and truly, truly want to thank you all for being, being here during this time. And I truly just want to open up for questions, comments, concerns, anything that you want me to, um, you know, hit home again. Feel free to, um, to pop something in the chat or you can unmute yourself. So feel free. Let's open it up for questions, some comments. And this is your time, right? This is your time to uh, to share, or this is your time to ask me some 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 questions here. So, who wants to um, ask a question? You can pop it in the chat, or you can unmute yourself and, and go ahead, Doris. I know you're about to say right. something. Yeah, no, I wanted to uh, first of all thank you, thank you, Diane, uh, for and for all uh, the participants today. Um, I know I've been getting a lot of questions. Uh, if you are going to be getting uh, this session, we are recording the session. So we're going to be sending uh, uh, the recording session. Also, we're going to be sending the survey. Again, it's very important for us, for you to respond to the survey as we are getting to, uh, ready to put together more workshops like this. Um, so one of the things that I wanted to add, uh, Karim, uh, yes. is, uh, setting expectations, and I think that is something mm. important that you know uh, our suppliers need to to have that in mind. Um, you know, like if I had a conversation with a brand new company in Pawtucket, and they have a great model, you know, but they they is moving, they is open their business, uh, they are in the process of putting together, you know, their catalog of products and services. Uh, so I think that it is important for them to learn what are the next steps, what are the expectations, what is the process. Not all suppliers are going to be working from day one, you know, with CVS because, you know, you need to build that capacity. So can you talk just a little bit about that, how important it is, uh, you know, to set setting expectations? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, the expectation is huge. And, and, I'll, and I'll give you all one of them that, that I did. And so um, I won't name the, the anchor, Doris, but um, I knew that there was a person that was being hired for a position at one of the anchors. And I researched on LinkedIn, right, for this person's position. I even called people that I knew that worked for that, that large business in Rhode Island. And I said, do you know this person? They was like, no. I'm like, well, they just got hired. You probably should know them. And so what I did, I reached out to the person on LinkedIn. And I asked them to have a, a quick 10, 15-minute meeting. And we had a 10, 15-minute meeting, talked about, you know, what, what I could provide for the organization, um, you know, just casual when I introduce myself mm -hmm. two weeks later, I get an email. Hey, listen, you know what? Can you put a proposal together for me based on what we talked about when you introduce yourself? Right. right. So it, it's almost like supplier. I can help you to get into doors, but then sometimes you have to do it yourself and kind of, you know, have like before I was prepared for the meeting. I, I did some research on a person, right? I went to their LinkedIn page. I went to the company's page. I kind of knew the initiatives that they were looking for. And my goal was just to introduce myself. I wasn't looking for business. I was just looking just for an introduction. And so based on that, there's an opportunity to give a proposal. We'll see if the proposal is, is, is one or not. But you have to say to yourself, how do I get more, more people in the pipeline if you're looking to grow sales, right? And then what do I need to do to make connections with people, right? And we met on Zoom, right? Um, and, and, and that person had, was very busy. They just moved to Rhode Island. A lot of things were going on. And so I gave them, I was empathetic to that, and right? And I said, oh, okay, you know, I understand where you are. And I was like, listen, I'm not going to take the full time that I requested and we'll follow up later. So you should, you should um, expect, you know, what's the next step? right from that conversation and then doris if you could post your email again also um let's see the powerpoint i think in the recording in the recording you'll get the the powerpoint also um we'll send you the capability statement 
I think I saw some other questions here. I'm trying to see here in the, in the chat that people asked. If I if I miss something, just unmute yourself or Diane. How to set up information? How about information about setting up your own Zoom account? So information about setting up. Oh yeah, so you go to zoom.us and set up your own uh, Zoom account. Um, I would say if you're in any industry associations or things like that, you might want to see if they have a discount as, you know, I just learned that the other day. <laughs> um, but yeah, you could, you know, Zoom is free. I think up to 45 minutes, you get a free Zoom account. But um, if you're going to be doing more uh, meetings with people, you might want to have uh, a paid account. But I also would, would kind of see, um, you know, if you could get a, a discount also. Also, what unique, here we go, D still, what unique, specific challenges have you seen during the past year um people getting tired of zoom <laughs> and being on web calls right that is a huge challenge that people have and some people do not like working at home they do not like working remotely so you have to be very empathetic right to where people are so because i know so many people are having meetings remotely I, I try to be efficient as possible with the meetings that I'm having with people. And like I said before, that sometimes means if I could, if I, if I asked them for an hour, but I could have a meeting between 30 to 45 minutes, then I'm actually respecting their time. And then a lot of people respect that. So like I had, a, I had a meeting with um, uh, a person that's working on a project with me yesterday. We scheduled for 30 minutes. I said, I only need five minutes of your time. I know you're busy. I know you're taking care of your family. This is what I need. Have a nice day. Talk to you later. They, they, they were happy. They was like, oh, thank you so much because I have somebody else in my house upstairs that's helping me with something and I got to get back to telling them what I need. All right. So other questions, comments that people have that you want to ask, burning, burning questions, any, any other tips that you're looking for? Yes, Kelly. Thank you. Yes, Rebecca is a good friend. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions that people have? Burning, burning questions, comments. This is your time, so feel free. You know, we have another 14 minutes left. Anything else that I didn't um, see in the chat, um, Diane? All right. Cool. Anything else, Doris, you want to talk about? No, we're good. All right. Well, listen, I want to thank everybody for attending today. We will send out the capabilities statement template. We'll send out the link to the recording. We'll also, um, what else? Doris put her email in the chat. Um, and I want to thank you for your time. I mean, go forth, use the resources that Supplier Rye has because they can open up doors for you and they know no people. So I want to thank you all for attending. Feel free, as I said before, go to um, that, that link if you want to join us for that 30-minute um, effective speaking skills session next Thursday at 10. And if not, enjoy your day. Use these tips. You know, test them out. Why not? You know, you might want to tell your, ask your client, listen, can I test out some things on you? That's what I do. You know, especially the people that love working with me. You know, I test many things out on them sometimes before I do with other people. All right, Doris, last minute words is in your hands. Yay. No, thank you, everyone, and good luck. And if you have any questions, please feel free to send me an email. I put my email there, and you will be getting an email from me anyway, so you can just reply with any questions that you may have. Thank you. And have a great weekend. Be safe.